It's so good to be with you all. If you're a first-time guest, thank you for joining us. Thank you for worshiping with us. It is good to be in church today. Um, I'm going to jump right into our text, 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1. And I'm going to really quickly, before we get started, uh, tell you about a book by I, uh, Alan Stein Jr. called uh, Raise Your Game. Long story short, he went and uh, he got to see a practice of Kobe Bryant. And I know there's some... Uh, Laker fans and Dodger fans in the room, and if, if you're here, then we say, number one, we love you and we appreciate your heart, um, but please never wear your paraphernalia into this house, all right? We have security that will help you remove that paraphernalia and leave it at the door, all right? Um, but Kobe Bryant, I mean, one, one, of the, one of the greatest of all time, and, and his, his work ethic was amazing. Anyways, um, Alan Stein Jr. went and was watching uh, uh, Kobe practice and, and Kobe was practiced for several hours and, and uh, Alan was like it's interesting watching him because he was looking to see if there's like some special drills or special things that Kobe did and what he found was is that Kobe was doing like all the basics the basic stuff that you would learn like in, in summer basketball camp right and uh, dribbling with one hand over here dribbling with one hand over here go around the cones just the basics the layups and, and so at the end they got to talk and he said man Kobe, you know, that's kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting to see this kind of practice. And this is what Kobe said. He said, why do you think I'm one of the best? He said, because I never get tired of the basics. I never get tired of the basics. Got to get good at the basics. So today is kind of like going back to the basics. And we're going to be talking about the church and community. First John chapter 1 and 5 says this. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. Let's stop right there. God is light. He, he illuminates. There's, in him, there's no variableness nor shadow of turning, which just simply means there's no shadows in God. There's no secrets in God. There's no hiding in God. There's no, his, his will, his heart um, is fully known, right? And he says this, in him, there's no darkness at all. And if we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet walk in darkness, which is interesting. Didn't say walk in unrighteousness or walk in, walk in evil, but walk in darkness, okay? We lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. What a thought. If we are in his light and we're walking in the truth of his light, and that is the, the rhythm of our heart, and that's the passion and focus of, of who and what we are. We want to know the Lord. We want to please the Lord. We want to walk in relationship with him. Then what comes next is, if that is true, then we will, if we walk in the light, he is the light, then we will have fellowship with one another. We will have fellowship with one another. It is impossible to walk in the light, to receive the light, to receive Jesus and reject his church. It is impossible to walk in the light, to continue to walk in the light, to continue to walk in the truth of the light and to reject the fellowship of the church. Several uh, months ago, I got invited to go to a, a little golf course, kind of a... Uh, I mean, we would call it just a startup golf course. It's not real fancy. It's called Mayakama, and I'd never been before. And someone said, you want to go? And I said, I, yes. They're like, when are you available? I'm like, any day of the week, especially Sunday mornings. Just you, you name it. I'll be there. And I, we get there, and, and you have to have a caddy. And uh, so I had a caddy. And so the caddy was like super cool dude. And, and But what was interesting was the caddy kept telling me not just where to hit, but where to miss and where not to miss. He would say things like, okay, you're going to go for this green, this approach, you're going to, but do not, do not hit it too far. If you're going to hit it, if you're going to miss it, miss it short. If you're going to miss it, miss it to the right. If you're going to miss this putt, you want to, you want to miss it long, that way you're putting back up. He kept telling me how to miss. Don't miss here, make sure you miss this way. And today, in a lot of ways, it's kind of one of those, like, I'm your caddy today, going, don't miss in this area. Because the area of fellowship and light, the communion of the church, has a profound impact on your life, not just emotionally, not just relationally, 
but spiritually and can be eternally. We look at the scriptures and we use words like community or communion, the breaking of bread. I love how much Jesus loves bread because, I, you know, that old saying, bread makes you spread. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore, all right? Jesus did not say, give us this day our daily broccoli. He did not say that. He did not say, I am the living kale. He did not say that. I'm the living bread. That's what he said, right? Come on, somebody. We're going to embrace it. Embrace it. Dr. Atkins, you have been canceled. All right. <laughs> but this, this breaking of bread, being in communion with the body. And, and you know, my heart today in this message is, is just simply this, just to, to pose an idea and a question that maybe will resonate in your heart. Maybe you will think about, and maybe, maybe the Holy Spirit will finish the sermon for us later on this week or later on this month. But, but thinking about what does it look like to really be a part of a church? What does that mean? What does that look like? So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence. I pray that the living word would teach the written word and the word would fall into good ground and bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, amen. All right. How many ever been to the San Diego Zoo? Anybody? It's pretty spectacular. It's supposed to be one of the best zoos, if not the best in the world. Um, Gary Richmond was the uh, former zookeeper of that zoo for many years. He's also a Christian. And he wrote a book called A View from the Zoo. And he, in the book, talks about a friend of his named Julie who came across uh, a little raccoon, and like a baby raccoon, and she's like, I'm going to bring this raccoon in, and I'm going to love this little raccoon. This little raccoon's going to love me, and it's going to be one of those relationships, you know? You know, people talk, they love their animal, and they pucker their lips like this, and they talk, you know. Anyways, um, and, and Gary comes over and is like, oh, you have a raccoon. And she's like, yeah, look how sweet he is. He said, yes, the, the, that raccoon is, is sweet, but there is a change coming. And I'm compelled to tell you that at, at about 23 to 24 to 25 months, uh, that raccoon's nature will change. And there's danger ahead. Like, it, it's cute now. Like, it seems like it's okay now. But there's something around the bend that if you don't break, realize it and take care of this, um, you, you will get hurt. And he talks about in the book how uh, two years later, she did not listen nor acquiesce. And two years later, uh, the raccoon literally almost ripped her face off and she had to have five plastic surgeries. And I, and I know that's, you know, a bit morbid and heavy and I'm not trying to be super heavy and those online, please forgive me. But the long story short is this, is that there are certain things that we play with that we think are okay now but there's a change coming. There's a moment of reckoning. There's a day where decisions catch up with you. There's a, a day that certain rhythms and muscle memory and habits of how we live catch up with us, again, philosophically, theologically, emotionally, morally. And, and if you're not careful, and if we don't take care of some of the basics in our life, then we, we, it, it, can, it can hurt us and devastate us. Um, many of us, um, I mean, we, we feel like maybe we're coming through this pandemic. We feel like, hey, we're kind of on the other side. Some people don't feel that way. Some people do feel that way. And this is not a conversation about that. But I want to talk like past tense about the pandemic, you know, COVID-19, which for many of us turned into quarantine 15. How many can agree with that? That was rough. And, um, but we heard words like this. Six feet of social distancing. We heard words like self-isolation. We heard words like stay at home, um, you know, shelter in place. We, we heard these terms. And again, this is not, I'm not saying those were bad or good or, you know, and, and especially at the beginning, I mean, it was so important for us to figure out yada, yada, yada. Not, not, not a political statement at all, but there's a profound effect of people pushing the eject button emotionally with relationships and, and, and being connected in and, and life-giving relationship and ultimately relationships with the church. In fact, 
the Barna Group and the Pew Research, they've done a lot of research on what has happened during this pandemic. And they found that basically in North America, the church has kind of had, hit like three different rows. There's a, there's a group of people who just left the church. They just stopped going to church. They just kind of de-churched themselves. And there's another group that are undecided. They're kind of in between. They're in a liminal space. They're kind of, they've kind of downshifted. You know, where church was a priority, they kind of downshifted to like, yeah, it's a thing. I'm so, but then there's another group, and they found this, and this is profound, that have leaned more into the church, getting more out of the church, more happy with the church, more, more, more connected. They're serving more. They're, 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 they're walking in this like this new tempo with the church. They've, they've leaned in. Some have, 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 you know, they're a stalemate and others have, have checked out. And it's just interesting because there's this danger that lies ahead with decisions that we make. And again, it may sound, uh, you know, like I'm getting up here to say, join the church and be a part of the church. And, 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 and I, and I want to, I want to frame this correctly because I, in no way do, do I want you to, 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 to leave here with a taste in your mouth that that's not of the Lord. I want, I want you to, to hear the compelling message of Jesus about how he not only brings us out of the world, but simultaneously is bringing us into the church. Like your salvation and my salvation wasn't just he's our heavenly father, but he gives us a family. It's called the church of the living God. Amen. Um, in summer of, of 1998, I graduated high school, and I was so excited because God called me just a, a year and a half, two years before into ministry. I was so thrilled about this. And so long story short, um, I'm, I'm going and, and look, checking out different colleges and seminaries. And, and so I go to the Midwest, and I'm changing all the names to protect the innocent or the not so innocent. So I find I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, go up to the Midwest, and I'm going to check out this, this, this school. And so I, I, I head up north. I said, hey, do you want to hang out with us? I was like, absolutely. This is going to be amazing. Thank you for including me. And they said, tonight, um, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna break into a water park. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. They're like, no, one of our friends, one of the guys at the school works there, and he knows how to jump the fence, and we're going to go, go to the water park. And they're like, do you want to go? And I was like, of course I do. And so <laughs> midnight, we all met up, and there was like 40 of us. And so we get to the fence, and... You should have seen it. Like they had it down like clockwork, like how they helped us up and over. And we're like, okay. And it was like hands lifted. We're like, we're like in the army, like jumping over fences. And it was pretty amazing. I was like, this is, this is what it's all about. And so we get there and, and the guy has like soap and he knows how to turn the water on with just a little leak. And so we are flying all over the place on these. It's unbelievable until the police come, okay? And this changed everything. And so you know, our cute little like group of, of, you know, seminary students and a few extra friends, you know, jumping fence. I don't, don't, don't ask me, don't ask me. We're all helping each other up. When the, when the police show up, we run in a million different directions. There's no order. There's no, it's just chaos. People are, bodies are flying over fences. I was able to somehow with a drill, I, I just, all I saw was my mother's face. She's going to kill me. She's going to kill me. I, was, I leaped over that, you know, 10-foot fence. I was just like, tit, 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 you know, the bionic man. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm over. And only about half of us made it out. And the rest were stuck. And they were like, help us out. We were gone. We were done. We were, it was over. And, and yeah, so a lot of them are still serving time in, in jail. And, <laughs> but the, the ministry that God has used in that prison is just unbelievable. Um, but what started as like, we're doing this together, turned into almost like every man for himself, you know, everybody we're out. And this is kind of like what the pandemic kind of felt like, like it, it just felt like, you know, that, that scripture where it says you smite the shepherd and the, and the sheep scatter. It's like one of those, those moments, like what's, what's going on? Well, will, will church ever be the same? What does it look like? And then I started asking the question, like, like, what was the church and who was the church and what, what, what does the future of the church look like? And, and if we, we can rebuild, what kind of church do we, we want to be? What kind of community do we want to have? What, what does relationship look like? What does ministry look like? And these are all the thoughts that I had in my mind. I, I thought, what should the church look like and what could the church look like? And 
And so, uh, you know, as, as you know, this is, you know, coming to church and attending church doesn't make you a Christian per se, just as much as sitting in a garage doesn't make you a car. Just being in proximity doesn't mean you are, you are what you think you are, nor does it mean that we're doing it correctly, right? Um, we believe that the church that we see is the church that we will be, and we've always tried to be a church that was about the people, not the steeple. It was always about the people, not the steeple. Don't care. The building is great. Thank you, everyone who served and made this happen. And, but it's never been about the steeple. It's always been about the people. It's been about reaching people, helping people, caring for people, sowing into lives and guiding people to Jesus. And there's a lot to what ministry looks like. Um, we've always wanted to be a small church, but with a lot of people. We want that feel where it's like, this is family. Like, I belong here. This is more than just a place that you, you go to and you check in and you check out and you attend, okay? One of my favorite bands of all time is Chicago. How many like Chicago, the band Chicago? Okay, uh, Peter Centura, I think he's one of the greatest voices of all time. I love, I'm not even gonna try. My, my, my Peter Centura sounds more like Aaron Neville. That, that's, how, that's how bad it is. But anyways, um, Chicago during the pandemic came to Santa Rosa and like a bunch of, People in our church were like, we're going to Chicago. You want to go? I was like, absolutely, I'm going to go. There they are right there. There they are. They got, their, they got their hands raised like they're worshiping in church. I've never seen Nicky Nicodemus dance like I did at Chicago concert. I said, when can we get that in church, Nikki? She's still working on it. No, she's doing it. She's amazing. Anyways, so then I found out, like I went to Chicago, loved it. It was amazing. And she's like, they're coming back. September, they're coming back. September, I can't remember when they're coming. September, she's like, you want to go? I was like, I mean, it's been like a year and a couple months. I'm like, it was great, but, you know, maybe in like two or three years, I'll, I'll want to go back because it's an event. It's a, it's, there's a novelty to it. I don't want to go every week and hear Chicago play the same songs, right? I mean, the novelty wears off. Church is not that kind of novelty. We don't show up because it's like, oh, we're going to go to an event where there's a band and like a TED Talk speaker, like a, a sage on the, uh, the stage, you know, who's going to go and pontificate some things. It's No, no, no. Like we're a part of a community. Hopefully what brings you back again and again is more than just a connection with what happens here, but a connection with the people that are out there. That's why we do groups and that's why we have teams and that's why we create events and that's why we... Uh, our heart is to create connections because the life of a church is in the people and in the Holy Spirit that lives in each one of us that wants to connect us in a relational, powerful way. If we walk in the light, then we'll walk with each other walking in that light. Amen? And so let me, let me just tell you a couple of things about the church. This is just our conviction. Number one, the foundation of the church has to be Jesus Christ. That's the, found, that's the message, that's the mantra, that's the motif, that's everything, is the message of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 and 11 says this, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So our church is not about politics or preferences, okay? That's not what we're about. If that's what you want, then, then that, you're not gonna get that. If you want a, a pastor who knee-jerk reaction to everything that's posted on Fox News or CNN, and we gotta have a statement tonight, that's not, that's not our modus operandi. The foundation has always been and will always be the message, the heart, the ministry of Jesus Christ. Most people today, many people today, I would say, the God that they serve in many ways is the God of their cause or the God of their understanding or the God of their experience, okay? They're, they, they're, they're emotionally invested in a God who looks a lot like them and feels a lot like they feel and are impassioned about things. And again, I'm passionate and I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about our country. I pray for our country. Uh, there, there are so many things that bother me and, I, and, and, and in the right forums and the right places I speak up and I say, but, but I'm gonna call light, light and evil, evil, but I'm not gonna say blue and red and, because I've gotta remember that the foundation is Jesus Christ. Things come, things go, but the foundation is and will always be Jesus Christ. The symbol of our church, the symbol of the church is not a ladder, it's a cross. 
It's always been a cross. It's never been about how good we are and how high we've climbed. It'll never be about how, 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 how wonderful any of us are. It will always be we are sinners saved by grace. The only way we got here is the goodness of Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, when you stand before Jesus in his throne, nobody's going to say, great, you are, you are amazing down there. We're all going to bow our heads, throw our crowns at his feet and go, it's because of the lamb. No one was worthy, but the lamb was worthy to open the books. When Jesus died, he didn't say, get to work. He said, it is finished. It is finished. It's a finished work, amen? And on our best day, we're like third string junior varsity. On our best day. Can I get an amen? We don't get good to get God. We get God to get good. And that's what makes the church wonderful is it's a little bit of a mess. We're all a little bit of a mess. People who need grace. People who who need forgiveness and need to forgive people. There's a lot, when you're a part of a church, you're a part of a, a, a place that there, there's ministry and, and there's, there's mercy that has to be given. And whenever we get into the crucible of relationships, it's easy to push the eject button. It's easy to, to you know, just to move on. I don't like this small group. I don't like the, you know what? It's easy just to bounce. How many here remembers this thing? It's a machine, or machine that used to be in the car. They still have it, but no one uses it. It's called, I'm trying to think of what it's called. It's called a radio. Anybody remember, remember radio? Or radio, and, and you would get channels, right? There was a, what was that thing called? Um, antenna. Remember the antenna? And it would, you, you would connect to a radio station. And what would happen? Somebody was playing songs on the radio. And what I would do is if I didn't like the song, what did I do? Scan. Remember scan? Yeah. And you just went from channel to channel. Some people seek, but many of us did the scan, right? We just get a couple seconds to the next till you find something you like. And a lot of people have, have pushed the scan button on the church. They've jumped from this to that to this to that. And, and again, there's times where, where God, you know, in the Holy Spirit will uproot us and plant us. But the danger, like the raccoon, is that this way of living in relationship where we don't really walk in light with people, Nobody really knows us. We're always kind of in the shadow. We're always kind of in the crowd. But no, you walk in. I see people who who maybe have been to the Promise Center, you know, been been coming and attending for several years. They still make a beeline for the door. They make a beeline for their seat. They don't know. But then I've seen people who have been here for, you know, a year or two and join a couple small groups. They walk in and people go, hey, Charlie, what's going, man? How's that thing? They were in a small group. They had a conversation. And and the guy goes, I've been praying for Oh, that's awesome. What, What an awesome miracle. They serve on a team and the team calls them up says hey where you been man we can't wait to serve next weekend with you serve once a month it's it's amazing man we're, how you doing because it's not it's not about just being on a team and just signing up for a group it's about being connected in fellowship with people because that is really where the power of the church comes in this is where spiritual emotional and transformational health comes is when we're connected it's not all done up here this is the preaching of the gospel but the ministry of the body of christ is really the power and the magic of what is living inside of this house it's really in you and it's really in all of us and when we connect that's where the power begins to flow through us amen Amen? Amen. so god's called us to stay connected. The Holy Spirit's calling us out of the world and into, into the church like Noah's boat, okay? Like Noah's, there's a draw, there's a call, get into the, get into the boat, get, get into the boat because when, when crisis comes, when tragedy comes, when, when the storm comes, what happens to the boat? It goes up. You see, everything else is going down. The church always goes up. The church has her best days and and, and and trials. The church always has her best days whenever there's tragedy, when there's pain, when there's uh, people say, "Oh, the church is being persecuted." You know, pr- pray pray for the church in these countries. Did you know that those countries are praying for the church in America? Wake up, wake up! Those churches are underground, but they're praying and they're ministering to one another and they're seeking God and they're opening their book. They have no other options. They're having visitations and miracles and signs and wonders and God's raising. All I'm saying is this, is like the church is glorious and wonderful and amazing and the church is God's plan A and there is no plan B. The church is God's embassy on earth. We bear the culture, the heart of heaven. An American embassy in other countries is a little bit of America a long way from home. It is where the laws of America rule. All embassies are sovereign territories. They do not belong to the country they are in. They belong to the country they are from. 
And if you get in trouble in another country, what do you do? You run to the embassy. You lose your passport in another country. You can't get out. What do you do? You run to the embassy. Problem with the law, problem with, with, with custody, whatever, you go to the embassy because they hold the culture and the laws of where your heart is, where your home is. Amen? Amen. The church is the embassy of heaven. Our culture, the way we think, the way we see the world, the way that we conduct ourselves, the way we act toward other people is not like the world. We're holding and fighting off a culture. People are escaping and running into the gates of the embassy. He says we are ambassadors. We're ambassadors for Christ. Did you know that? This is, an, this is a safe place. If you've been broken and wounded and hurt, you can run to the house of the Lord. I run to the, 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 the house of the Lord. That's where the peace of God is and the power of God. There's power in the house of the Lord. Why? Because there's a building? No, because there's people full of faith who go, can I pray for you? Can I be here for you? Can I care for you? We have Stephen's ministry. We have a small group. We want to lead you. We want to disciple you. We want to walk this out with you. The next thing is the church is a body. Okay, the church is a body. It means we have many members. Okay, we're all different. Yeah. My faith is unique. My experience is unique. Your experience is unique. Your gift is unique. My gift is unique. My assignment is unique. Your assignment is unique. My calling is unique. Your calling is unique. All of us are so different and it's wonderful yeah. Yeah. because we're a body. Each one of us, this, this, this body, you know, it's a, da it's a dad bod. That's okay. I'm building a mega church for the Lord to live in. That's what. <laughs> but it's made of many parts, and they're all different. The finger is different than the ear, okay? What a lot of churches will do is they, they suppress diversity, and they go, everyone's got to be like, they'll, they'll get on a, like a, a soapbox. Why, why doesn't the church prophesy, Pro prophesy, prophesy, prophesy? And that's their thing, and what they do is they attract other people who are, oh, prophesy, prophesy. It's all prof prophesy, prophesy. I'm just using this as an example. Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. And so what they do is they attract everybody who's a mouth. And so the mouth just becomes one big mouth. The church, you walk into the church like, this is one giant mouth. <laughs> There's no diversity here. Everyone thinks the same way and has the same exact spiritual gift and same makeup. Because there's, there's no diversity, right? You know, the, the sloppy, wet kiss. That's the church. They give you a sloppy, wet kiss from heaven, right? Like the song says. Um, but long, long story short, like we're to be a body of many members and many different members, but all connected. When the finger's connected to the hand, the hand's connected to the arm, the arm's connected to the shoulder, shoulder's connected to the body. Guess what? You can do things. You can go places. There's power. There's, there's energy. There's synergy. There's mission. Why? Because all of us are different. Every one of us in this room, you're not here by accident. The Bible says you are a member in particular. You were placed into the body. You were grafted into the body, which means you have an assignment. You have a meaning. You have a purpose. You have a faith. You have a gift. You have something that belongs in the body of Christ. Romans chapter 12 and 6 says this. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. We have gifts according to the grace. 1 Peter 4 and 10 says this, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Use them well. So being a part of a community is not showing up and leaving. Hearing a TED talk, hearing the sage from the stage, it is about somehow leaning in, being engrafted in, creating relationship, taking off the mask, getting into the light, being exposed, because what we don't want is the exposure. What we don't want, the light. But if I, if, I'm, if I join the team, if I go to the small group, then they're gonna hear about what I'm going through. It's gonna come out, it's gonna come out, it's gonna come out, it's gonna come out. And he says, that's exactly what I want. You were not called to bear that alone. You were not called to hold on to that alone. There's power in the body of God. If we walk in the light, then we will have fellowship with one another. That's, that's the power of the church. And so the diversity is, is, is the key. Everyone, some of us walk into the room and we see crooked chairs. And we go straight in those chairs because they're crooked. I gotta straighten them up. Oh my goodness, whew. Some of us walk in and we don't see crooked chairs. We some, see something totally different. We see a person sitting by themselves. We go, oh, I, I don't want them sitting by themselves. We run over, hi, how are you doing? We, we just, that's our heart. That's what we see. It's different than the person that sees the crooked chairs. Another person walks in and goes, oh, I feel faith in the room. I, I, I just feel like God's gonna do something. Totally different. They see something totally different than you and I. All of us see. And there's, there's a million, billion, trillion, zillion, gillion, a Googleplex, different kind of divi di di uh, diver uh, uh, diversities of those gifts. 
but they live inside of you, but they don't belong to you. The Bible says that you're a member, not of the promise center. We're a member of each other. Your gift belongs to me. My gift belongs to you. So God has not by accident planted you here, put you into this place, not to hide, not to be in the shadows, not to be you know, skirting around, not to be on the outskirts, not to be in the peripheral, but to somehow figure out to get connected. And that is why we are insane in the membrane on join a team and join a group. Join a team, join a group. Insane in the membrane. If you know that reference, then God bless you. You've lived a wonderful life, okay? We're going to do everything short of sin to make sure that the church looks like the church. Not a club, not an event. Because it's fun to go to events. It's fun to go, oh, we're going to this conference. Oh, we're going to this concert. Oh, we're going to this thing. Those are awesome. Those are important. But what should and what could church look like? Were we doing it right? Were you doing it right before the pandemic? How much of your heart did you leave out? How much of your heart did you give? And really, it's the crucible of relationships that make us better. I need you and you need me. It, sh it really does shave off all the hard edges. When you want to push the eject button, you're like, I, you know, this, this uh, you know, it's easy to go, let's scan, let's keep going, let's just go to another church, let's just do this. And all of a sudden, before you know it, what God was using through people to reveal something, to heal something, has now been put back in the dark. But it's in the crucible of showing up. It's in the crucible of being there at the table and letting God do his work. The Bible says if we ask God, he will forgive us. But if we confess our faults, we will be healed. Isn't it interesting? This is how we get forgiveness. This is how we get healing. You will not find healing apart from the body of Christ. Your healing is going to come by staying in the pocket. There's a seat for you. Amen? All right, let me give you a couple more things that I think are important. I love what Ed Stetzer said. He said, God has used the mega church to reach Korea and the house church to reach China. We should hold models loosely and Jesus closely. They're not opposing. They're not against each other. In some contexts, the big church model works. We gather in groups and then gather in large gatherings randomly. Vice versa, we gather in large gatherings and then randomly or periodically or systematically gather in groups. Both work. Both have changed nations. The point is the model is not, it's just a preference. A model is just a, a, a way that churches do it or, or areas are more prone to be open to because of how they work and schedules or whatever it may be, culture. But the long story short is, Jesus is what we're holding on to. And there are people who are looking at the church, trying to inspect it and trying to define it and trying to be, they're down on the church. And if something happens in a church, you know, 5,000 miles away, you know, something that is normal in everybody's life, it happens every day in the world. But if it happens in a church, oh my, it's gonna hit the headlines. and go, oh, the, the, church is, the church is not the problem. There's broken people in churches. There's people who make mistakes in churches. There's people who make mistakes outside of the church. The church is God's plan A and there is no plan B. And can I tell you, the, the, church, the local church is the hope of the world. It is the way that the message is sent out. It is the way that people are discipled. It is the way that I get better and you get better. It is the way that I'm accountable. It's the way that my spiritual gifts are not just animated, but they're developed and they're deployed. The local church matters. And thank you for being a part of the local church. And thank you for loving the church. And thank you for being committed. And thank you for stepping into it. Here's the danger, the, the, the raccoon danger, is that we're now in this social experiment where people are disconnected and yet connected by social media. They feel connected, but they're not connected. The meaningful relationships are gone. Bill McBi uh, McKibben social environmental uh, writer. He studied uh, basically this, this, this social reality since the 50s. And every decade, the number of close, intimate friendships that people have on average every decade has gone down, while the number of square footage in a person's home has gone up, up, up. 
We have more space for stuff, less room for people. That's the epidemic of today. An amazing statistic. Couples that attend church weekly reduce the, the, the risk for divorce by 47%. You're welcome. Just kidding. <laughs> they did a, a study, Dr. Bruce Alexander, professor in Vancouver. Uh, the experiment was with rats. And, you know, thank you to all the rats that have been a part of these millions of experiments, <laughs> wherever you are. But they put rats in these cages and they would put uh, a water bottle and another water bottle. One was just pure water and the other one had heroin. Some had cocaine. And of course, the rats would go to one and then go to the other and then choose the one with the cocaine or the heroin and then would keep going and keep going and would literally induce itself until it, it died. And it happened over and over and over, no matter you know, how big the cage was, pretty the cage was. But what they found was when they created a rat park, basically with cheese and a bunch of friends and relationships, all the rats would go and try both waters, but the rats would stay away from the one that had the heroin or the crack in it. The reason was, and this is what they found, is that addiction is broken by relational bonds. That was the study. Addictions are broken by relational bonds. Relationships have such a profound effect. 90, I think it's 92%, Harvard said 92% of where you end up in life is your emotional IQ, your relational IQ, your ability to bond and connect with people. And we have an, the new epidemic is Christians who want to bond with Jesus and can't bond with the church. They want to bond with Jesus and they cannot bond with the church. If you walk in the light, you will have fellowship with one another. I have tried to, um, as many of you, we've tried to pray away fat and it doesn't work. You can't pray away loneliness. It doesn't work. It takes action. Action is required. Mother Teresa said, loneliness is the leprosy of the world today. People feel more alone and you were created by the living God to have relationship. Why? Because the God who made you is relationship. For eternity, he has been relationship. There was never a moment where God was alone. I've heard people say, God was alone, he was lonely, he made mankind. No, in the nature of the eternal God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, he was never alone. He's relationship. He has always been relationship. He always will be relationship. You were created in his image, and so you were created for bonding. You were created for connection, and we have been trying to do it wrong for so long. We are independent. We are, we are Americans. <laughs> and here's what I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you, let's all move to a commune because I can't do barefoot. Okay, I can't do barefoot. Okay, I, I have allergies. I can't live out in the fields with the flowers. Okay, I can't do it. But what I'm saying is we've got to learn. We've got to pray, God, teach us to bond in a healthy way. And what we're never going to stop doing is talk about groups and talk about teams and talk about events and get connected and be at the table and let us know you and become known and take off the mask and get out of the shadows and let God do the healing work and amplify those gifts and share what's inside of you because you're, you're not a mess. You're a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece made by God. Loneliness is not remedied by proximity to people, but deep, powerful connections with people. Our heart has a longing to belong and to have meaning, intimacy, and to have impact. If you walk in the light, we will have fellowship with one another. If we're going to do anything great, if you're going to do anything great, you've got to have a spotter. Now, you can obviously tell that I'm a, I work out a lot and I'm pushing to the limit. But the other day, um, I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do more than I've ever done before, and uh, I'm going to need a spotter. And my, my brother-in-law was like, I'll spot you. And it was so awesome to see him curl what I was barely able to press, okay? 
That's how you call, what you call depressed. I was depressed after that. I was like, if, I, if I'm going to push myself to the limit, I got to have a spotter. And I want to tell you that God has a spotter for you. Some of your, what, what I love, I'm going to tell you, Lauren Mack, I don't know if he's in, I saw him coming in, Lauren, Lauren there he is back there. I love, he, this, this, would you stand? I don't want to embarrass you, but you're a good looking dude, so you know, there, show off that face, you know. Um, brother came into our life, went to a, went to a freedom small group, um, and then said, I want to I lead a group. And the, the tenor of his heart and the, the way he was connected, he started connecting. He started connecting with other guys and they started meeting early in the morning and doing groups together. And there's a bunch, you, you see it at the church. I mean, you, you, you see the, the trees in the forest. And some people see the forest, I see the trees. And I see Lauren Mackey walking in, high-fiving this guy and, oh, and praying with this guy. And I see this bond that happened. And I see this freedom on their lives. And I see this grace that's upon them. And that doesn't happen by accident. And it's not easy. And I'm sure that you would have loved to sleep in on, on Wednesday mornings at 5. What time did you guys meet? 6 o'clock. Okay. You got that extra hour. Okay. Um, that, that, that took work, but it was profound. It has had a profound impact. That's just one story of many stories. That's why we're not going to stop talking about groups. And we're not going to stop talking about teams. And we're not going to stop compelling you and imploring you and beseeching you to lean into the church, be part of the church. And if it's not this church, I promise you, I got a list of me. I was, talking, I was uh, connected with a pastor this week. I want to bless you. Man, we know churches that could use you. If you're, if you're going to be on the sidelines, hey, there's churches that need you. We'll point you to those churches. Get involved. Just don't go there and sit. Get involved. Get in the game. Do the whole, here we go, coach, I'm in. Get in the game. This is the time. This is the time to get, this is the time to find your place. This is the time to say, Jesus, why am I here? How can I walk in the light and how can I walk in fellowship? This is a part of God's plan for our lives. Amen? Amen. All right, let's do this. Let's bow our heads and we're gonna pray. I wanna pray for each of us because this is, this is our heart to see you whole. And God's plan for you to be whole is having those strong bonds with believers of faith. Thank you, Lord, for every person that's in this room, every team member, every friend and family member that is growing and striving and learning and persevering. And I thank you, God, for our new Christians, our young Christians who are figuring out, going, what is this guy talking about? But Lord, today, I just feel to remind us, this church, that we're a body, a living organism. We're alive. And so, Lord, I pray over every person that the power of the Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us. There are gifts in each person in this room. When you ascended into heaven and our name was written in that book of life, you poured out gifts, you poured out talents and ministry. God, release the body to be the body. Release the church to be the church. Teach us how to have true communion. Teach us, Lord. Teach me. Teach me to be a better pastor. Teach me to be a better leader. Teach us to be a better church. We ask for your grace. We ask for it, Lord. I thank you for every person in this room, every person online. We receive your word today in Jesus' name. God bless you.